Hi, this is Carolyn Kinane with the Contemplative Sciences Center at the University of Virginia. And this is the sixth in a series of eight videos. This is um, contemplative course design. This is an exercise for instructors on making the process visible. So in talking about contemplative pedagogy, I have found uh, that critical thinking and creativity in problem solving and in creative expression get a lot of attention, but what doesn't get a lot of attention are the contemplative processes that can precede critical thinking and creativity. And so I want to expand the sense of contemplation rather than just thinking of it as a single act and to suggest it to you as a mode of inquiry, as a process that develops habits of mind to complement critical and creative thinking and expression. So that is before critiquing an article or assumption or a theory, it could be very useful to sit with it on its own terms, give it a generous reading and consider what I might learn from it. So that is I can create some contemplative space to bring awareness to my sensations, to inquire into my intentions and to come into presence, to notice non-judgmentally, to look again at this text or this theory and to bring generous attention and curiosity to it, then move into critique and analysis and revision. Similar with problem solving in science and engineering, hyper-focused attention, rumination, or avoidance can be unproductive when they are not paired with open, uh, open awareness and aspect of contemplation. And so what might contemplative inquiry mean in the classroom context? So this means reorienting my classes, assignments, and activities so that students can give this contemplative attention, this time and space to a thing, a person, or an idea. So before leaping to the critical or creative product that they are supposed to create for an assignment. So this could mean that students do a deep and close reading of a text before analysis and critique, a deep and close listening to a person or a piece of music before discussion and debate, or deep and close observation of natural or social phenomenon that precedes interpretation and analysis. And some of you might be thinking, I already do this. I tell students all of the time to do this. Allow me to suggest that I might tell students to do these things and I may expect them to do it, but that if I don't explicitly give students time and space to do it, and if I don't authentically value it using the existing mode of currency, making it visible in assessments, then students will be more likely to skip this contemplative process and leap to producing the critical or the creative product. And so instructors have to, I would suggest, don't just tell students to give time to the process, but actually give students the time and the space to do this, to assess the process and to link the process to goals and objectives. Uh, for the course. And so when we invite students to take a contemplative pause through a practice, an activity, or an assignment, it is an invitation for them to develop habits of patience, awareness, humility, generosity, maybe do some metacognition, and also to work very closely with our discipline's materials. And you'll recall that um, it's not easy to create new habits just by thinking or talking about them, that, that it, it helps to actually do them. And so if we craft assignments that make visible this contemplative process, we can balance students' attention to what they will argue or create or demonstrate or prove their product with the students' attention to their process and also their existing environments, be they scholarly, creative, natural, or their social environments. And so the learning objectives for such activities might be to develop habits of patience, awareness, humility, generosity, metacognition, to learn effective strategies of process, which complement product orientation, or to value scholarly context, intellectual community, and interconnectivity. So at this point, I'm going to ask you to pause and reflect. I'd invite you to consider an assignment that you have that could benefit from an element of process focus and to consider how you can make visible for students the being with a thing, the way that they are observing or reading or listening. And so you may wish to consider your responses to the previous exercise where you identified some dispositions that you'd like students to cultivate and think about how you might make that process visible in your own assignments. Take some time to hit pause and respond to these questions.
and the next video is your core job description as the next video in the series. Thanks so much for your time.